Welcome to Captivating or Capturing the AHA Moments in Seesaw, Building a Digital Portfolio. Today, I'm excited to have you join us in exploring how to create digital portfolios in Seesaw that foster pride and ownership in their learning journey. As we are waiting for everyone to join, we would love to have you introduce yourself in the chat share where you're from, your role, and your grade level. The chat is on the right-hand side of your screen, and if you don't see it, look in the bottom right corner for the chat icon and just tap to open it up. Before we begin, a few housekeeping items. If you have questions during the session that you would like for Mia to answer, please click on the Q&A tab and ask them there. This ensures that we will not miss them. If any questions go unanswered, we will reach out to you and answer these after the webinar. Other comments or ideas can be put in the chat tab so all participants can view them. Ensure that your chat and Q&A tabs are open. If they're not, click on the chat icon in the lower right corner. You will then have the option to click between the chat, Q&A, and handout tabs. The handouts tab includes key takeaways for today's session. This session is being recorded. A link in the recording as well as the handout form for this webinar will be shared in a follow-up email 24 to 48 hours after the session is complete. My name is Melody Barnes, and I am the Family Coordinator here at Seesaw, and I will be your host for today. Before we would get, begin, I would love to introduce you to our presenter for today, Mia. Mia Leonard is an instructional partner here at Seesaw Learning. Before coming to Seesaw, Mia taught kindergarten in the Chicago Public Schools for 10 years where she explored innovative ways to transform teaching and learning with technology. Mia is the author of Building Blocks for Tiny Techies, a teacher's guide to digital learning in primary classrooms. Mia speaks regularly on how to empower our littlest learners with technology and events across the country. Welcome, Mia. Hello, Melody. Thank you so much for having me and hosting today. Hello, everyone. I am so excited to be here with you today. Let's go ahead and jump in and get started. So as you know, portfolios have been around in education for a very long time. Portfolios are used to gather evidence of student growth on learning goals. They help you celebrate those amazing achievements that your students and your families have. And they also help to inform your instruction. And as you know, portfolios can be paper or digital. So let's take a moment to think, what do you notice about the two portfolios that you see on your screen? What are the similarities? What are the differences? Share what you notice in the chat. I'll give you a minute or so to think about how are these portfolios the same and how are they different? So I'm seeing responses come in from the chat. They're saying that the one on the right is a little bit more organized, is digital. Um, they notice that on the right, the portfolio captures that evidence of learning year after year. Um, the portfolio on the right allows students to record their voice, to share their learning. Thank you so much for sharing. As we begin this session, I want you to also think about your purpose for creating digital portfolios. Are they required for your school or your district? Um, are you going to use them for a particular unit, maybe a particular term or trimester, or just for assessments? Setting this purpose will allow you to focus on ensuring that you set up your portfolios to meet your needs. So in the chat, I would love to have you share why you will be creating digital portfolios with Seesaw. So 
CIFI digital portfolios allow students to create to creatively, excuse me, capture their learning all in one place using multimodal tools. Students can take a picture of their work, they can record a video, they can upload their work from another platform, or even use a blank canvas in Seesaw to create. Students then can use the other tools in Seesaw, like perhaps the microphone, to add their voice and reflect on their development as a learner. This allows you as the teacher to easily gather, gather that evidence of your student's growth towards their learning goals right in Seesaw. And another amazing thing about this is that families are connected to the learning and can really celebrate the growth and achievements of their students, really strengthening that homeschool connection. So here's our uh, learning objective for today. Today, you will learn how to use Seesaw to capture and document learning over time with digital portfolios. And here are our learning outcomes, how we will get there, our exact roadmap. So we'll begin by exploring how to document learning and those student reflections in Seesaw through their student portfolios. And then we're going to learn how to create and utilize folders to organize learning. All right, so to begin, let's see how students can capture learning and reflection happening in the classroom to begin capturing digital portfolios of learning and provide a window into the classroom for their connected family members. In Seesaw, students can creatively capture learning that gets added to their Seesaw journal, all while making their thinking and their learning visible for you as the teacher, as well as their connected family members. So let's take a look at some ways that students do this. So students can use the multimodal tools in Seesaw, like the video tool, the camera tool, the microphone or drawing tools uh, to really capture that learning that's taking place in ways that work best for them. They can do this uh, independently or they can partner up with a buddy to record one another. So let's take a look at the examples that you see here. The students on the left were learning about different shapes and they were tasked with creating a design with a variety of shape manipulatives. So as you see here, here, they use the photo tool in Seesaw to capture what they created, and then they layered that drawing and that microphone tool on top and use those tools to explain what shapes they used. Now, in the middle, students learned about insects, and they created their own insects out of Play-Doh. After building their insects, students captured a picture in Seesaw using that photo tool, and then they layered that label tool on top and used the labels, the label tool, excuse me, to identify the parts of the, their insect. And finally, on the right, partners are taking turns recording themselves presenting a weather report after learning about severe weather. So you can see here that one person is the meteorologist and the other person is the cameraman. Um, and they are using a video recorded re uh, webinar report to actually explain all the things that they learned about severe weather. Um, what's powerful about these examples is that um, all three um, reflect uh, hands-on learning and reflection, um, and this will all live in students' Seesaw journals or their digital portfolios. Um, using Seesaw really allows students to engage in those joyful learning experiences uh, that connect uh, them with their teachers, families, and students, um, and it's all centered around student growth throughout the year. All right, now let's take a closer look at how students capture their hands on learning, specifically using that video tool. So I'm going to show you a video in just a second where um, students were learning all about pollination and the pollination cycle, and they use popsicle sticks to explain. Let's take a look. These can make um, pollen by sucking it out of the flower and bring it to another person. And then that makes a that makes a seed that makes a flower, or wind can blow from one flower to the other flower, and then the seeds will drop and make another flower. That's pollination. That is pollination, as the little one explained. So um, what do you notice about um, having this student capture that pollination cycle actually inside of Seesaw?
How does that enhance the learning experience? Go ahead and drop your responses in the chat. I see some responses coming in. So as you can see, using Seesaw to capture this, this hands-on learning experience really allows that students to think more deeply um, and explain their thinking. Um, and it also gives teachers and connected family members insight into what that student um, actually knows. Um, and we know that um, students should still be engaged in hands-on learning. They should be creating, they should be manipulating, and they're allowed to do this um, using the multimodal tools in Seesaw. All right, now let me show you how students can um, actually do this. It's really easy and it's student friendly. So um, to capture their learning in Seesaw, students simply tap that green add button in their Seesaw account that you see there. And when they tap that green add button, they're taken directly to the multimodal creative tools in Seesaw and they have access to all the creative tools that you see here to create their posts. So students can capture their thinking by maybe taking a picture of their work. They can capture it with video, as I showed you just a moment ago. Uh, they can upload learning from their computer or their Google Drive, or using that drawing tool, um, they can open up a blank canvas and they can use a combination of these tools to really capture their learning and their thinking in creative ways. All right, here is another example. So this student used the photo tool and took a picture uh, of their final writing piece in Seesaw. So they took a picture of that writing, then they used the microphone tool to record and share all about their writing. Teachers and students uh, can record up to five minutes of learning and reflection using uh, the microphone tool. So let's go ahead and uh, take a listen and a look uh, at this student's writing piece. I see the wolf. I used capital letter. I used finger space. So students can tap to simply tap on that microphone. It creates a screen recording and then they can go ahead and explain and reflect and use those tools to reflect on their writing. Um, when they're done, all they do is tap on the green check to add that work to their journal. And now that final writing in the student's reflection on um, their sentence and how they drafted their sentence is available in their portfolio for them to see, but also for their teacher and their connected family members to view as well. Um, this is really powerful because as students progress throughout the year um, and they add more and more of their writing, they're really able to easily see their growth over time. So after students post work by default, it must be approved by you, the teacher, before it is actually added to the class journal for their connected family members to see. So when there is a student post for you to approve, you're going to see a little red bar pop up at the bottom of your teacher journal that looks like the one you see here. And you just simply tap on review. And then from here, teachers are able to uh, engage in student work by tapping the heart to give that little post a like, or as the teacher, you are also able to leave a comment. Um, all you have to do is tap on that speech bubble and then you can leave a typed comment or um, you'll see a little microphone. And then when you click on that, you're able to leave that audio feedback. And voice comments are especially helpful for our youngest learners, those emergent readers, those multilingual learners. Um, and plus, uh, students really love hearing their teacher's voice on their work. So next, you can approve the post or you can um, delete it or you can even send it back to how students just do a few more revisions. 
Here is a pro tip for you. When students add work to Seesaw that you want to make sure um, is highlighted for maybe conferences or that you want to reference when tracking growth, make sure to have them tag it to their highlights folder. Uh, so to do that, all students have to do is just tap on the little metal below your comment that you see here. Um, and then you will see that it turns purple in the highlights folder um, has been tagged. So this just makes it easier to find uh, their best work, those important pieces of student work um, learning later when um, you have those conferences or maybe those back to school nights or curriculum nights where you wanna ha highlight specific work. Um, all you have to do then is just browse that highlights folder as opposed to searching through the entire journal to find that work. So one thing I do want to point out um, is that by default, all students can see each other's work, including posts you tag a student in and comments by you or other students. Uh, if you do want student work to be private or if you would prefer students not comment on one another's work, you can turn these features off um, in your class settings um, from your Seesaw Journal by tapping on the wrench icon. Another thing I want to point out is that um, if you are having students uh, use devices from home and they are accessing their journals via home learning codes, the default is students cannot see each other's work. All right, I would love to hear what thoughts everyone has for how you and your students might use the green add button to capture and reflect on learning. Go ahead and share uh, your ideas in the chat. I'll give you um, a minute or so to do that. All right, so let's take a look at these responses that are uh, coming up in the chat. People are saying, um, that they might have their students pick one thing they learn on a particular day uh, and to capture and share and reflect on that. Uh, oh, love the idea of establishing a Seesaw Center during literacy rotations or giving students an opportunity to record themselves reading or sharing their writing. Um, another popular way to use the green add button is to have students capture and explain their math work so that uh, you as a teacher um, will be able to actually hear what your students understand. All right. Next, let's learn how students can expand their digital portfolio in Seesaw by capturing standards aligned learning happening in the classroom, allowing you as a teacher to monitor their progress and growth against standards in Seesaw. So as the teacher, you are able to easily monitor, monitor student progress and really celebrate your students growth over time using the standards view of the progress dashboard within your teacher account. So this uh, screen shows what a, a completed and fully graded progress dashboard uh, looks like. So I want you to just take a moment to imagine if you had this end product, you could have a really quick, quick glance into your students' progress um, directly tied to those student work examples. All right, um, I'm gonna jump in and actually show you how. And also I will be providing a resource uh, to support you in learning more about the standards view um, of the progress tab. So now I'm actually going to jump into my Seesaw account to um, demo some things for you. All right, so I'm actually gonna switch over from my slides and I am going to share a new tab. So here I am, and I'm actually just going to go um, from the main Seesaw journal page. So here I am in Seesaw. And I want to show you how you can assign uh, pre-created templates to support students in capturing standards aligned learning uh, that can that you can then um, grade to just really make things easier for you and make it easier for you to track student progress. 
All right. So let's say that I am a third grade teacher uh, planning for reading centers tomorrow. Um, I decided or planned that one of my stations is an independent reading station. And I want students to capture and share what they read. So I'm just going to hop into the Seesaw Library by tapping on the library button at the very top. You see it here is next to that messages button. And that's really going to take me right away to the Seesaw Library. And um, the Seesaw Library, for those of you that aren't familiar, is our library of standards-aligned research-based supplemental lessons. They have all been designed by our amazing curriculum team um, that I can go to to support learning in my classroom. And the great thing about all these lessons is that they are ready to teach. So I'm actually going to scroll down just a bit underneath where it says lessons by subject and theme. And I am going to click into the Seesaw Essentials tile, that bright blue tile here. And then I'm going to scroll all the way down to find the highlights collection because I have an amazing coworker, Melody, who showed me these awesome templates that I know will be perfect for students uh, during reading tomorrow. So here is that highlights collection. Um, and this is a, a collection of interactive portfolios and journal pages um, that I can use right away um, with my students. So I'm gonna tap on view 10 lessons. So here I am, that's gonna open up the collection and I'm going to be able to see all of the lessons that are in this collection. And then I'm gonna scroll down until I find the ELA highlights pages. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll. So here, right here is the ELA highlights pages and I'm going to click on that specific lesson. So for reading, we are working on reading informational text. So um, I am going to find this practice activity titled Independent Reading, uh, Nonfiction, and I'm going to go ahead and view it as a student. So the little um, icon there of the actual template has the option to click on view as a student, and I am going to just tap on that to see what students are asked to do within the uh, activity. So the first thing that um, I notice here is that there are audio directions in both English and Spanish that students will listen to. So I'm gonna go ahead and play those directions in English for you. First, click on the frame to upload or take a picture of your text. Next, click on the speaker or video frame and read the text. Then click on the speaker frame to answer the prompts about the text. Okay, so this is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, students here will take a picture of what they're reading, then they're going to record themselves reading, and then they get to choose uh, something to share about what they've read. Okay, so since um, this is the perfect assignment for my students, I am going to assign this now. So I can go ahead and just tap that assign button in the upper right corner. And then I have the option to select uh, my class or classes that I want to assign the activity to. So if you are departmentalized and you teach multiple groups of students for reading, you can assign to multiple classes. But I am going to assign to Mrs. Abby's intermediate class. And then I'm going to tap next. All of my students are going to rotate through this station tomorrow. So I'm going to go ahead and assign this to all of my students. Um, you'll also notice that I have the option to schedule this for a later date. Um, so I could tap on that start date. I can choose a specific date or time to assign this to my students and tap save. But um, since uh, I'm just going to go ahead and... Um, tap, just leave it to uh, assign today. So students, since students won't see this activity until tomorrow, uh, anyway, I'm not going to change that start date. So next, you see there's an option to organize. And this is where I can check those standards that are actually aligned and tagged to uh, 
this specific activity. Um, and this is really going to support me in tracking and monitoring that student progress and supporting students towards mastering standards. Um, I want to make sure that the correct standards are tagged to this activity. So since I am a third grade teacher and my uh, Seesaw account is set to third grade, when I click on the edit button, I see all of the third grade informational standards that uh, for reading that are tagged to this particular activity. Um, one thing I do wanna point out is most activities um, that you pull from the library will have more than one standard attached to it. So you as a teacher can decide which of those correlated standards you wanna assess. So maybe there's one main standard you wanna assess and you want to uncheck all of the other ones. You can do so just like, um, I showed you just there. And also, um, if I click on all standards, I have the ability to add additional standards uh, as well. So I can check additional standards. I can search by code, um, as you can see here. But I'm just going to keep the selected standards, and I'm going to go ahead and tap Save Tags. And um, then I am ready to assign. So I'm just going to go ahead and tap assign now. And you'll notice that you do have the option to click on go to class. So once I actually assign this activity to the student, um, I can click on go to class. Um, if, I, if, if it were a time for me to deliver this lesson to my students and have them go off to their reading centers, um, I could actually review exactly how I want my students to complete this activity. So I would just go ahead and um, tap on the lesson. And here's that activity. I can preview it for my students, or I'm going to actually go back to that lesson. Uh-oh, let's maybe make sure. Go to that lesson in the library again. There we go. So let me just find this lesson again, because I just actually want to show you how to use that present to class feature um, to actually demo and model for students how to complete that lesson. All right, so. For my ELA highlights pages here, there's that lesson again. Another thing that I can do um, when I'm in front of my students is I can actually use this present to class feature and I can present this lesson to my class. Um, I can tap present to class. I can project this on my overhead projector or my smart board or interactive board. You see, I have these tools. I can actually click on the frames and model for students exactly how they will be completing uh, this activity. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump back over to my slides here. So before you approve your student work, I just wanna make sure um, that you are looking at your student responses, at their learning, and you're really listening to those reflections um, and also that you are grading uh, your student work um, according to the standard that is tagged to the activity um, to really help support you in tracking their growth. So um, once you have a student post to approve before actually tapping that approve button, just tap on the graduation cap. And then you're going to see you have the option to grade that work or to apply a star rating uh, to uh, that specific standard that was tagged to that activity. Um, so you go ahead and um, select the star rating um, correlated to how that student performed against that standard. And then you would tap that green check to save that rating. One thing I do wanna point out is that students and families do not see the tag standard or the rating that is only visible to teachers and administrators. All right, um, as a reminder, um, you can add that typed, um, those type comments or those audio comments um, or piece of feedback um, when you are going through that process of approving student works as well. 
And um, lastly, after you provide that rating, you leave your comments, make sure to tap approve to the post um, to post the work to the student journal. All right, so let's just take a moment to stop and think. Uh, when you think about your students, what makes you excited about what you just saw? Go ahead and share what excites you in the chat. So think about how will using the highlights pages make learning joyful? What will your students uh, be excited about? And what uh, are the engaging aspects of, of what I just showed you? So I see some people are saying that they're excited that there are actually um, templates that make it easier for their students to reflect some people in the chat are saying that they are excited about being able to uh, rate and track the, that progress against standards. Oh, okay. I see also giving students choice. Those highlights portfolio pages give students the choice for different tools that they can use to allow them to really highlight and reflect on their learning in ways that work best for them. All right, so lastly, um, in order to set up your Seesaw uh, as a digital portfolio, we uh, wanna show you how to create folders so that your portfolio is organized. Um, not all posts added to Seesaw need to be a part of your digital portfolio, but folders really make it easier to see work that demonstrates students' performance over time all in one place. So you will want to create your folders before actually having your students reflect in Seesaw so that students have the correct folders to add their work to and their digital portfolio stays organized. So I am going to show you how to do this. So here um, are some various types of folders that I have created in my Seesaw journal. Um, you might create folders uh, for different subjects, for small groups, maybe different times of the year or any other system of your own. Um, I'm gonna show you how to create these next. So I'm actually going to switch back over into my Seesaw journal. So here I am, I'm back in that journal. I'm actually going to X out of this here. And I'm actually going to um, go back to my main teacher journal page. I'm gonna just tap the X in the upper right hand corner. And I'm gonna tap on that journal tab. So I talked a little bit about the highlights folder every, uh, earlier. Every student has a highlights folder, and this is a great folder um, to use for conferences or as an overall digital portfolio for the entire year. And as a reminder, all you have to do is, uh, or students have to do, is underneath um, their post, they need to just tap that ribbon icon, and that will add any post that they create to their highlights folder. Um, you can also create your own, like the examples that I just showed you. Um, and to do that, you're going to go to your class settings. So what you're going to do is you're going to navigate to that little wrench icon in the upper right corner of your journal, and you're going to tap on that. And then you're going to scroll down and you're going to find the folders section. And it's the very last section in your settings. And you're going to tap on manage folders. And this is where you can create those customized folders of your own. You can see in this account, I have a folders for computer science, math, Spanish. But to create a new folder, I would just tap on the purple button at the bottom that says create a folder. And from here, I can enter a name for my folder and I can choose um, a color uh, for my folder. Um, so um, I'm just going to go ahead and type in a name. Let's type in um, math quarter one. Um, 
another tip that I have for you for uh, to support those emergent readers and those multilingual learners is you can actually uh, attach an emoji before the name of the folder so that uh, your students are easily able to find the folder. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up my emoji keyboard. I am working on a Mac. So if I select um, control command space, that is going to bring it up. If you are on a Windows device, I believe that is the Windows button in the period. And I'm actually Actually going to just choose the little numbers there to put in front of the name of my folder and then I can select a color let's go ahead and check blue and then once my folder uh, I have my name and the color selected then I can go ahead and tap that green check so you can see here that new folder has been added at the very bottom and all I have to do if I wanted to create more folders is to repeat that process All right. So when you create and assign an activity that you want your students to add to their digital portfolios, um, make sure to tag a folder to the activity. So um, this is so when your students complete the activity, all of their responses um, automatically get added to uh, that specific folder. Um, so um, once you've tapped on the assign button, you'll notice that right um, at the bottom, there is an option that says folders. You can go ahead and tap on the folders option, and then it is going to bring up all of the options for folders that you can tag your student responses to. So you as a teacher, um, I told you before how students can add their own post to the highlights folder. Um, you as a teacher can um, actually add student responses to the highlights folder or you can choose one of those customized folders that you created. So you can see here, I'm going to go ahead and select that goal setting folder. Um, and then you're going to go ahead and tap save. And you're going to tap the, uh, the green check. All right. So one thing I do want to make sure that I point out to you is that you will need to turn on the step for students to add posts to folders um, so that they are actually able to add their own work to folders. Um, so um, in your class settings underneath folders, you're going to tap show add to folder step. And then you're going to select uh, students and teachers. So I'm going to actually go back here inside of my actual journal so I can show you that. So here I am in um, my journal tab and I just tapped on that wrench icon to access those settings again. So where it says folders, you're going to select show add to folder step. And you want to make sure that students and teachers are selected this way um, when students post on their own before they go to tap on that green check mark they're going to see a list of folders and they have the ability to add their own work to a folder all right so all right, now that I've showed you actually how um, you can use Seesaw to document learning and how you can set up folders uh, to organize your digital portfolio, what types of portfolio folders uh, did you create or would you like to create for your students? I'm going to give you uh, just a moment to go ahead and add your responses to the chat. Okay, I see some people saying that uh, this would be perfect to use for conferences. So they're going to go ahead and create those conferences folders, goal settings, maybe um, one way that um, I use Seesaw um, folders in the past with my students is creating um, my best folders. So specifically, I would create a my best writing folder where students would add their best writing work. Thank you all so much for sharing those amazing ideas, everybody. So you did it. You learned how to document learning and reflection in student portfolios and also how to use folders to organize learning. You all rock. All right. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Melody to wrap us up. Mia, that was wonderful. Thank you so much for presenting all of that wonderful information to us. This concludes the presenter portion of our webinar. 
we have some resources to help you learn even more about Seesaw. Head to our training site, web.seesaw.me forward slash teacher slash resources to find quick start PDF guides, short training videos, view recorded webinars, and more. Our goal is to provide you with easy ways to learn, not anything that will bog you down or confuse you. Teacher's time is very valuable to us. In the handouts tab, you will find a link to this site. Want to keep learning after Connect? Seesaw offers a variety of free webinars every month that are fit for all educators. Join us live at live.seesaw.me to learn how you can integrate Seesaw into your classroom. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.